Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name's Rich and we're back with the TTO2 that uh, I recently introduced on a video where we did a serious upgrade of hop-ups and in that video I did suggest that I might take this to a brushless build and that's what we're going to do today. I'd really like to build this into quite a quick touring car. So we've already upgraded the gearing, the pinion and spur gear and I've installed a four pole brushless motor from eTronics and I went with the Photon SPS which is the brushless motor and ESC combination. I've used this before so I'm familiar with it and it is a very very good piece of kit full instructions the ESC the motor which is already in there some connection pins and also program card so you can set all all manner of um, different accelerations braking reverse forward only all sorts of handling changes the ESC does have a fan and it comes with bare wires but pre pre-soldered so we'll do the connections for those and I'll show you how I solder these these cables we'll put it all together and we'll take it out for a good test run And for the for the eagle eyes of you out there, you might spot these wheels. They're Tamiya wheels, and they're from the BMW Evo M3 E30, and that's the body that I'm currently building to go with this when it's finished. And that's the the, the body that we'll run it on. I wasn't going to show it to you today, however, that's about as far as I've got with it so far. It's obviously going to be the Jägermeister M3. I really think that will build out to quite a nice car. There's a spoiler to go on there as well. Um, got the full decals, but uh, let's let's have a look at the uh, the brushless upgrade first. Also going to be running it with a 2S lipo. So the gearing setup is now a 23 tooth pinion gear with the upgraded spur gear, which is 68 tooth. So 23 and 68. If we look that up. On the um, Tamiya gear ratio chart position F and that's how I've set this up making sure that you get the motor mount the right way around and then before we've put the case all back together I've just given it a turn and the mesh is absolutely perfect I could see it was with the cover off so I'm happy with that. So the next bit is wiring up the ESC. It's got standard power supply and switch capacitor, which you can ignore. And then these five cables, red and black is the power supply. And blue, orange and yellow are the three motor connectors which go to the three from the motor. And to begin with it doesn't matter which way round you connect these. If the motor works in reverse you can switch any two wires and you, you won't do any harm. And the motor should then run the correct way. So a little bit of soldering to do. 
Yeah, this is a back to basics tutorial, but I want to help as many people as possible that might be put off doing this. Some soldering iron, some solder, something to keep the iron tip clean. And I just use some of this wire Brillo um, kitchen cleaning in a, stuff in a bowl. And that dip the tip in there and it seems to keep it nice and clean. And then for the connectors, obviously the three motor wires, the motor ESC kit did come with the three connectors. So they all need fixing on there. And we need to put three pieces of heat shrink on each wire first. And these, these tips are pre-soldered to keep the wires tidy but you will need to add solder to connect them to the plugs so let's prepare the plugs first and then I'll show you how to join them as for the power supply the black and the red again we're going to add heat shrink to both cables Our connector of choice, I use the Dean's connectors. So the, the female end is on the battery. So we'll be connecting the male end onto here, which is these two connection points. But while we are soldering to avoid any distortion of the plug, I will use a spare female connector just to keep this plug as it should be and to continue to state the obvious but to avoid any issues we need to obviously check the polarity of the plug so as you can see from the battery the plug fits in that way so following it through that will be the black connection and that will be the red and we'll check it again when we actually come to solder it so there's three motor connectors there's a square end and the other end is scooped and it's the scooped end that we're going to connect the soldered wire to But first we're going to prepare the scoop by just dropping some solder in it. And we're going to place a little bit of heat shrink over the wire first. And this bit is key to making a good soldered connection. And it starts with putting some solder on the iron first. Because if you touch any object solder with the bare iron, the iron will just attract that solder and take it off and you've probably experienced that and wondered why it won't stick whereas adding solder to the tip of the iron first means that the heat transfer from the iron is through the solder which gives you a much better connection then we'll offer the wire up and touch it with the iron and the heat will transfer and you'll feel the wire will just suddenly connect to the part you're soldering and it's as simple as that so a good connection will be where you can't see any bare wires then cover the whole connection and the plug with the heat shrink and finally a lighter just to shrink the heat shrink we're going to add some solder to the Dean's plug first this is called tinning and it's just preparing the connector with some solder Keep the iron tip clean, 
now we'll prepare the other terminal in the same way and you're just looking to add a small drop of solder push the heat shrink as far down as it will go so it doesn't melt when you add heat and preload the soldering iron with solder and then add heat as before and suddenly the wire will grab onto the terminal And fix the heat shrink and a bit of tape just to make it extra secure so test time we've got the motor connected to the ESC the ESC connected to the receiver and the throttle socket steering servo connected in the steering battery connected So I'm going to turn on the transmitter. And turn on the ESC. That beep tells us it's looking promising. Steering right, steering left. And throttle is actually going the right way. So now we know it works, we're going to calibrate the ESC. So we start with turning the transmitter on. So you hold the set button and turn it on until the orange light goes solid. We're then going to Full acceleration until it beeps, forward until it beeps, neutral position, and then turn the ESC off to save the settings. As we've increased the speed, the geometry of the suspension and steering is even more important so a set of vernier calipers are essential here i'm just checking that the rear camber is equal so the camber is equal on both sides so now I'm happy with that, you can finally tighten the grub screws to keep it all in place. So I'm just using this square to show you the amount of negative camber. You can buy a, a camber measurer for this. And the reason we want negative camber is when we're doing high speed corners and the body rolls, the tyre will roll and increase the amount of contact and therefore grip. So turning it on, we know that the servo is in the neutral position and you can usually tell by eye where the steering needs adjusting. So we'll again use the Vernier calibers to balance the front end, both with the camber adjustments and also the length of the steering arms, so that we've got it totally balanced and with a slight toe out, which will help the handling at speed. And finally, tighten up the grub screws to keep it all in place. The other tip that um, I use is to use a cut map because the grid lines on it will help you see what's square and help you with the lines. And you can see that both these front wheels are slightly toe out, which is what we want. 
and it's just a case of tidying up the cables and that's where the um, carbon bridge helps so we've added the heat sink to the motor we've tidied all of the cables and also the suspension geometry is all correct so it's just getting it out now for a run and see what we've created So here we are out on a test run. Now the ground is wet. It's been snowing here, which isn't ideal. And I am struggling at the moment to uh, get any grip. As you can see, the grip is uh, it's not great. <laughs> So the general handling is really good. One thing I do notice is the acceleration is a bit harsh, but we can change that by using the program card and I'll do a separate video to show you how to change those settings. But we'll do a speed run. And that is quick. <laughs> 